the trail and I'm gonna try and do my gear review which a lot of people have asked for I don't know why um, it's things that people pack in their gear is so personal um, and really kind of full of shame really when it comes to the uh, luxury items that you pack um, but I will give it my best attempt um, so I guess the first um, favorite of all of the items that I have packed is my Superior Wilderness Design Backpack. Um, it is a custom pack from uh, Brendan. I sent him a rather bizarre email that said freakishly designed girl requires backpack. True story. Feel free to email him to ask. Um, but actually this pack is set up so that it's got my width, my length and my girth uh, around the waist. So um, I've used this many, many, many times just walking to and from work and on various other trails and I love it. It's held it really well so far. Um, it's incredibly comfortable. I used to have an Osprey pack, which I'm not saying it wasn't good, but I used to get little rub marks in the back and in this one, it's lighter, it's freer. It's just more comfortable. So um, I really love it. I couldn't recommend it more. Um, obviously I've decked it out with some water bottle packets pockets for the uh, mobile phone and snacks and things like that around here. Love it to death. So that's from Superior Wilderness Design. The second of my big three is my Enlightened Equipment Convert sleeping bag. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, the Convert is sort of like a quilt. It's a sleeping bag that has an open-ended foot box that you can just cinch and close up. It's got a zip down it that you can completely undo and use like a quilt and it's got a couple of straps that you can um, sort of fix underneath your sleeping pad so that it, it works more like a duvet or a comforter if you're in the state. Um, I got this done with the maximum level of down that I could because I sleep really cold and so far I haven't used it yet but I'm looking forward to it. Although I see that when we're starting the trail, it's not too cold on Blood Mountain um, and all the areas around. So I'm actually hoping that whilst it's super warm, it will be just right nice to won't sleep too cold. So that's the big one of my second of my big three. The final one is my tent, which I've gone old school. I haven't actually uh, purchased a new tent. I have had the big Agnes Coppice fur tent for many years. Um, I love it. Uh, it is a two-person tent, so it's actually a little bit bigger than the standard. Um, it is the one with lights, and I have realized that I can ditch the battery pack for lights and use instead just the rechargeable battery pack. It plugs in just as well. Um, so that's what I'm taking as my tent. So in terms of a lot of my clothes, as you might expect, we're starting hiking in February, so it's a little bit colder. And as a result of that, I'm taking probably a little bit too many clothes, um, at least initially, and hopefully over time, I can send them to my friend in the States. Um, and if I need them back in the whites or something when we're in the North, then they can send them back to me, but or we can just send them home, we'll see how we go. So uh, I guess the first one is my Puffy, which is super warm. Um, it's an Arterix Puffy, navy. I think it's like 8.50 down. I've worn it a couple of times. In fact, my friend that's staying with me at the moment has worn it as well and said it is super warm. So I'm hoping that that, uh, that keeps me well over the next couple of weeks in particular because I'm a little bit frightened that actually ditching winter coats and ski coats and all the rest of it um, and just relying on this and base layers is going to keep me warm enough. But hopefully my Eterix Puppy will work incredibly well. So the other part that I'll be wearing in winter is going to be I've got a little Arterix fleece. Uh, it's actually a pretty lightweight fleece. Um, so just red. Um, a lot of other people I've seen use these on the trail. I have probably worn a blue one of these for every week for the last 12 months. I love them. As I said, they're lightweight, they're warm, they're, um, you know, they have polygene in them so that they don't smell too much, which is great. Um, also paired that off with some Montane leggings that has some pockets in them, again, polygene. Um, and then I have a long sleeve base layer and Arterix top, navy top. And my first item that my friend wants to bin is that I have two t-shirts instead of one. Uh, so we have both an icebreaker t-shirt uh, for the winter days, as well as 
a softer Columbia polyester t-shirt. Apparently I need to bin one of these because it doesn't make it through his uh, shakedown but you know I feel like just in case of the stench, I know you're meant to embrace the stench, I'm gonna hang on to both of them just in case. It's not that heavy, come on cut me a break. So they're in the pack. For the summer months I am going to just literally hike in a pair of Under Armour shorts which everybody from my work has probably seen forever uh, whilst I was walking to work and home as well as just a little north face best top singlet wife beater whatever you really want to call it depending on which continent you're on uh, for my nighttime sleepwear I've got some icebreaker leggings which I'm thinking might get a little warm um, in the summer months but certainly for the next couple of months they should be fine and then just a polyester top from Mountain Warehouse that I picked up yesterday. I just wanted something soft and cozy for bed. So where to from here? So in terms of waterproofs, I'm actually hiking with waterproof pants. I have training for the AT in the UK. You're actually walking in a fair amount of rain too. So um, these have been widely tested for me uh, walking along coastal hikes and things like that. Um, so we've got an Arcteryx Gore-Tex top. Um, some of you may have seen this on my Instagram where I'm absolutely wet like a pig and yet I'm sort of reveling in how much fun it still is and a pair of Berghaus trousers that have been very, very muddy. But actually, I think waterproof trousers are underrated. They do stop wind, they do stop mud, they stop rain for me, um, but I know a lot of people don't like them. Well, I'm a big fan and... If I'm a little bit cold in my leggings as well, I don't mind putting them on over the top and hoping for the best. Wow, so I guess to finish off the clothing, I have your standard cap, beanie, and uh, underwear. So I've gone with icebreakers. I know a lot of people like ex officios. I like icebreakers. I'm sure they're just the same. It's just that I've never tried ex officios. Um, I like the fact that they're merino wool so they don't smell. And as I indicated before, I am petrified of the embrace the stench culture. So I am hoping that that means that they don't smell that much. Um, I'm somebody that's really open to blisters on my feet. So trying to avoid those has been a pretty big deal for me. So I've tried to figure out different types of sock combinations. And I've got to say, I've, I've gone through a lot of different socks. And what I found works best is actually an Injinji sock. I don't like the liners. I find that the liners break really easy. You can put your toes through them. So just regular Injinji socks uh, with a pair of darn tufts over the top. So I guess I've got more socks. I've got four pairs of socks because I'm probably wearing Injinjis with darn tufts every day. So I've got two pairs of Injinjis, two pairs of darn tufts. If I wear like just one pair of contests around the fire or something at night, that's definitely possible. But I just wanted to make sure that I look after my feet because let's face it, if you screw up your feet, you're actually sort of messing with your whole hike. And then the last thing is just a little sports top that I can hold the girls in place. So that's pretty much the clothes list for me. Um, in terms of the other bits and bobs I've got here, there are a couple of more luxury items which First of all, include my sleeping bag liner. This may get ditched uh, sometime in the first month. Uh, the, my friend who's looking at me at the moment is giving me a big old thumbs down to, to the liner, but you know, my sleeping bag is super warm. So it's possible that I could actually use this Thermalite Reactor Cedar Summer liner as my sleeping bag in summer if I get too warm. So I like the fact that it has that dual purpose of summer sleeping bag, could keep me warmer in winter hopefully keep my bag a little less smelly as well, but we'll see how it goes. Um, to go with my sleep system, I have also got the Thermarest um, Ultralight, which is good. Um, got a little pump to go with it, but all of that fits in this tiny sack. Um, I have been told that these are really prone to breaking. I haven't used it yet on the trail, so it will be the first time as I'm going out on the OT. I've used other ones before, and I must admit they have also popped. Um, I have been told that if you put your waterproofs underneath, then that can stop it. Um, but I also have just a little butt pad um, and maybe putting a butt pad under my hips will also help sort of reduce the uh, 
reduce the overall impact on possibly puncturing your, your Thermarest sleeping pad. Uh, what have I had also? In terms of my cook system, I have a Tokes pot. You can see that I've made a really nifty pot cozy here. Um, um, it is the titanium one. I've got one inside another, so this one isn't Tokes. This one is like Mountain Hardware or something. Uh, no, Life Venture, a little cup. Um, and then, what do you know, a little pocket rocket inside of that altogether. So I'm sure I will need to wait until I get to the States before I can buy some fuel. Apparently, US Airlines don't really like you carrying the fuel. Surprise, surprise, on board. Um, so we'll do that. In terms of my, I've got some cord here to hang bear bags. Um, and actually I'm using this massive bag that Brennan sent me with the backpack to hold my food. I can see it's massive, but you know, I need to apparently keep food in it as well as potentially your cook pot when you're in the shanties, um, as well as, you know, sometimes your toiletries and things like that. So I didn't really want to skimp on the size of this. And because it's X-Pack, it's super light. Um, I think the other thing about X-Pack is hopefully no critters can chew through it. Although, you know, apparently things can still get chewed through. So if you have it in bear boxes, the mice chew through it, or if you've got in trees, squirrels chew through it. So I guess it's anyone's luck to see what happens. Um, for the water filtration systems, I've gone with, uh, I'll get some smart bottles when I'm out in the States, uh, but I'm also gonna use the CNUP bladder and soya squeeze. Um, pretty standard, screws on the top of your smart water bottle. You can either drink straight out the top or squeeze it into your pot. Um, that seems pretty standard for everyone really in terms of water filtration system. Um, I have a little luxury item here, which is my sleep pillow. Um, in terms of the electronics, I'm a little bit of a hog when it comes to my phone battery and so I've been told to always take two in case one portable battery breaks down, but I've got two portable batteries here with the appropriate cords to charge my phone and the portable batteries themselves and a little power brick to charge them all together, as well as a Epsil rechargeable torch uh, for hopefully some hiking, night hiking, night time, what have you. So, I think we're almost there. Um, so in terms of camp shoes and normal shoes, I will be starting the, the hike in some ultras. Uh, these are the Lone Peaks. I think they're the 3.5s. I really like them. I think I've gone through two pairs of Lone Peaks already. I wasn't a fan when I first got started because the zero drop shoe actually really hurts your um, calves if you've got inflexible calves, but they prevented injuries big time through my hiking. So that was really good um, and then I've got some zero camp shoes along the way so the zeros are fun they're lightweight they're flexible Whee! so yep that sounds good as well I'm using a old stuff sack as my pack liner um, I like it I've been told it's too heavy but actually I think that um, a refuse sack I'm totally gonna put a hole in that whereas this is a little bit more robust so that's what goes inside of that I have one head buff, one neck buff, um, just to stay warm, keep my hair back. Clearly my hair is a little long, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but you're probably gonna see me in these, just tying my grotty, grotty hair back constantly. And a camp towel, which I didn't really think of until this week, but my friend who was hiking with me recommended I could take a camp towel. So there you go, camp towel. Hopefully if I go to wash up in the stream, I'm now not going to be sort of left with nothing to drop myself. So my last two or handful of items is that I have uh, some black diamond trekking poles. My hiker buddy recommends that I take the bottoms off these. Apparently they're only good if you're hiking in snow. So he wants me to hike with that. I think that makes oh, okay sense. I don't really think that these things actually make that much difference. So happy to do that. Uh, and then toiletries. I mean, I'm a girl. We, girls are naturally going to hike with more toiletries until we know better after being experienced through hikers. Um, so I guess I've got all the basic toiletries that you might find. So, you know, a little powder, some toothbrush, toothpaste, a razor, 
some Dr. Bronner's and, you know, some travel towel and, you know, hopefully some wipes to give myself an evening clean or something like that. Um, the other bag that I actually have here is a combination of all these duty little things like, um, you know, face nets if you're in bugs, uh, bug spray, different types of tablets like ibuprofen, um, as well as replacement filters and things like that for my water filtration system. Uh, of course, I want to follow the leave no trace principles, so I have a little trowel uh, for making sure I'm digging my waste, as well as some TP, uh, for making sure that I'm clean and a rubbish bag to pack all of that, as well as my food waste behind. Um, sorry, the only other thing I forgot to tell you about was my gloves, which I'm sure will only be valid for the first month or so. Um, although I hear from Rocket from last year that she used these for about six weeks, so we'll see. Um, and then sunglasses because I'm hopeful and a little pack to put my wallet and my passport in. So that's pretty much my gear list. I'm going to end the video temporarily here, but then I'll come back and tell you how much it weighs. I think it's about 12 kilos, which is like 25 pounds, but we'll see. So that's obviously before food and water. Um, but as I said, let me just go away, pack the bag, I'll show you the packed bag and what it weighs in a second. So see you. Well, I've just finished packing. And uh, this is what my pack looks like. It's pretty small, pretty light. Um, so it weighs in at 7.9 kilos um, base weight. So this is before my food and water, uh, which is about 17.4 pounds. Um, there are two items in here that I actually weighed at, but didn't uh, mention previously. One is my Chokes fork, nice long handled fork. And the other one is a little friend that a dear mate gave to me. Um, it's a little pig called Borstal, and Borstal will be making the trek with me along the Appalachian Trail. So be have your eyes peeled to, to see him. Um, so I'll always also be hiking the trail with my buddy Dave. Um, be, be careful of him, he's a crazy Australian man, and his little buddy, Otto, who I had to introduce you to, Otto even has his own Instagram account, Otto Adventures. Um, he's pretty cute, he's had a lot of hiking experience as well, so between Borstal, Otto, Dave, and I, hopefully the four of us can find a nice little tramley and finish the AT in 2020. Thanks, bye.